Hello, my name is David Bogren, and I was born in the city of New York, raised in California, but my parents are originally from the country of Honduras. I met my wife in the country of Argentina as I was attending Bible school, and it was there where uh, we got married. And uh, in 1998, we had the, the opportunity of going as Word of Life missionaries to Honduras. We had the privilege of starting the Word of Life Ministries. We ministered there for 14 years, and God allowed us to, to see a, a fruitful ministry for His glory. We had, we had three beautiful children that all were born in the country of Honduras, and six years ago, we moved uh, back to the States. We lived in Atlanta, Georgia for four years, but two years ago, God led us to the city of Charlotte. And we now live in the city of Concord, uh, and I'm presently on staff at a church called West Cabarrus Church. So we're sitting in staff meeting one day, and our founding pastor's like, so we're going to hire somebody. And we're just kind of all like, great. And then the Bogren family came in. I was extremely excited because we know the history that West Cabarrus Church has had with Word of Life, specifically in Honduras. So it was just a thrilling time. We were looking forward to it. We were looking for the great things that God was going to do with the Bogren family coming here. We got to meet David and Fernanda and Abby and Emily and Alex. We had no idea why uh, we had moved to the city. But a year ago, uh, we understood why we had to take steps uh, to move to this area. My son, Alex, was diagnosed with a bone cancer called osteosarcoma. Uh, we found out about uh, this, this sickness or this disease uh, through a basketball injury. Hey, my name is Alex Bogren. I'm 12 years old. All right, so, um, so one day on Saturday I was playing, you know, and doing my own business, you know, crossing people up. And then um, I was going up for a layup, and then I, I hit knees with another dude and then I fell down, and then I started hurting. And after that, it just never got better. But like a day or two, it was, you know, it felt like something was like pumping, like, like, you know, it, like it felt like- Like a heartbeat. Yeah, like a heartbeat, a heartbeat. And uh, the same knee where the tumor was, he banged knees with another player, and that led us to speak to specialists. We went to a sports, I think, um, sports doctor and he looked at the x-ray he looked closely at it and then um he told us that there was a little dot a little black dot and he was like you need to find out what this is so he issued us to a to an orthopedic surgeon his name was uh dr pat and we came in and then he secretly told my dad what i had and then i was just waiting outside and then i think that night um, he told me, and he was like, look, Alex, you got osteosarcoma, which is a bone cancer. So that day, I was, I, was, I was crying, you know, I was sad, you know, typical stuff. But then I just didn't for, like, ever. Um, I just stopped being sad. I just, you know, everything's going to be okay. So, yeah. Why was it going to be okay? Um, it's because God is good, and everything turned out in the end. And it was there where um, the specialist began to say that he had to begin chemo treatment as soon as possible. So when he was diagnosed, he was diagnosed with a disease called osteosarcoma, which is one of the most common bone tumors in childhood. It usually affects your lower um, legs, and so a uh, bone contrafemur. Um, and so he had a tumor there, and I think one of the most important things is making sure that we can take that tumor out. And so when we take care of osteosarcoma in this country, or actually globally, we give chemotherapy first, um, trying to make the tumor stop growing and, and kind of create bone. We take it out, which is a pretty big time surgery. Um, we put in all special rods and make people bionic men and then um, and then we give more chemo um, and so it's a pretty arduous process um, you know for osteosarcoma the the reason that we do um, chemotherapy is to try and kill the tumor in the inside and so when we take it out we talk about something called necrosis rate or the death rate uh, for Alex specifically his was greater than 90 percent which actually is um, incredibly good for him and that means that the chemo worked um, which makes us always really happy um, and so the chemo really needs to penetrate the tumor and really kind of do its magic for us to be able to remove it and be able to come back and say, hey, I think we've really got this and I think we've done a good job. Before we had effective chemotherapy for osteosarcoma 30, 40 years ago, uh, about 80% of kids diagnosed with osteosarcoma died. 
and that was with very extreme surgeries like amputations. Um, someone who had a tumor in the tibia like Alex would have had an amputation above his knee and still, even with an amputation, have about an 80% chance of death. So, you know, the advent of uh, chemotherapy and effective chemotherapy for this disease has really been a game changer and we've taken it from 80% uh, mortality to close to 80% survival. So that's truly sort of flipping the table on the disease. Through this process, we began to think about, uh, first of all, what God wanted to teach us. And uh, we also had to personally accept everything that was happening. All of a sudden, one day, everything kind of changed. And David comes in and says, my son's been diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer. And we were shocked. Um, it, it hit the children's ministry, it, it hit the church family, it hit the staff. And it was this weight that we were like, what, what, what's going on? And um, ever since the time that we found out what um, Alex was going to go through. What always stuck in my mind was that Alex said, God's got this, and he had a smile on his face from day one. I think just watching children suffer, they suffer so much better than adults do sometimes. You know, it's just that they have the, the faith of a child, like it's talked about in scripture, and adults can draw from that strength. It's amazing. And he was such an encouragement to us when we'd go visit or we'd get the little videos or something along that line, just to see how much he was trusting God, even in the waiting or the suffering or the unknown. He never shook his fist at God, but always glorified him. Uh, it was a difficult period in our lives. Uh, we we're thankful because God gave us a wonderful verse in Psalm uh, chapter 73, verse 26, that speaks about even though uh, our bodies are frail, even though physically everything can go wrong, uh, in God we have a rock and we have uh, a portion that lasts forever. Um, my heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And what that means is that your body is really weak, but um, God would take care of you and would, even though hard things happen, He would always be with you and take care of you. And God, through that verse, gave us the strength to be able to confront that difficulty. So Alex began his journey. Uh, and uh, 18 chemo treatments later, and a, a surgery that replaced his knee and his upper and lower tibia, uh, we have seen uh, amazing things occur. Uh, today, Alex is uh, cancer-free, and now he is working on rehabbing his knee and beginning to walk correctly. Uh, through all of this, we saw the strength that Alex had through not his own power, but a, the power of God. And uh, God has used his life uh, and God has raised a platform uh, to encourage others, uh, not only here in America, but also uh, around the world. Meeting the Bugram family, um very awesome, amazing people. You know, I saw Alex and coming down the hallway and coming to his first visit and his family, you know, just seeing how each time they came, even if it wasn't a good day, you know, they were worried about how everyone else was and, you know, how to, um, using the tools that we would teach them to help Alex at home. And um, it's just a blessing to meet the Bogram family for sure. It'd definitely um, bring a spark and a light into the clinic. You know, they're missionaries. I think that their hearts were obvious on the outside the minute we met them. I think that was pretty incredible. And Alex is just a force. He's just a really sweet, really good kid um, with very good parents. And so I think um, we wanted to do everything we could, and he made it really easy. As we were talking about everything that was occurring, and as we spoke about the needs of others, and, and as we saw uh, the uh, difficulty of cancer in other children, we, we began to talk about uh, you know, what we could do. All of the supportive care that has helped improve um, the trajectory of a patient through that, through that illness. Um, and maybe some of the planning or the timing of the medicine has changed a little bit over time, but the medicines themselves have not, which is why we really need help with um, more research and funding and things like that to, to improve, to continue to improve. 
Um, I think pediatric research, um, in one word, is unfunded. Um, and so, you know, if we look at the kind of global market for pediatric cancer, it's only about four to five percent, depending on the country that you're in, um, out of everyone. And so that seems, when you're going through it, um, abysmally low, right? Going through the cancer journey. Um, I always say that life doesn't stop, right? Cancer doesn't uh, stop everything. Bills still come, work still happens. You know, your creditors aren't gonna stop. And so I think it's our job in that to help families with simple things like a Target gift card, uh, Chick-fil-A, uh, gas cards, things like that. I think uh, many organizations that do that, I think impact the lives of our patients every day. And it's, it's beautiful to see. Children are children no matter where they are. Cancer is cancer no matter where they are. And everybody around the world, um, especially children, need, need help with that. There is not enough funding available for not only research, but the supportive services. And I can only imagine that funding in some of the other uh, countries um, that don't have the resources we have is even more difficult. As we begin to uh, examine statistics and, and to see the reality of pediatric cancer worldwide, uh, what, what is it that we could maybe begin that can help the lives of others? And uh, as we begin to, to, uh, to, to, to see people sending messages through Facebook and other social media platforms, we, we came uh, to encounter a couple that um, also are going through a difficulty in the country of Honduras. Uh, this young man who is now a pastor at a local church in Honduras uh, was actually a Bible club leader in the country of Honduras when uh, we directed the ministry. And he began to share with us that his son had leukemia. And uh, so we continued our communication with them and, and began to help them as well personally. Uh, but as we talked about uh, Santiago, Santi, and the difficulty he was confronting through leukemia and the, the chemo treatments and, and uh, everything he had to go through, uh, we began to say, why don't we start a foundation that can maybe uh, be used so other families that are going through the same ordeal uh, could be helped or uh, a foundation that can help in some way through cancer research um, or uh, the possibility of also helping other cancer centers around the world uh, providing medication, equipment, uh, connecting physicians uh, and helping other cancer patients uh, as well. There are two ways where you can personally help us fight childhood cancer around the world. You can go straight to our foundation website, alexstoryfoundation.org, and you can donate personally to our foundation. A hundred percent of what is donated will go straight into what we're doing uh, throughout the world. Through our foundation, we desire, to, first of all, to help families that are going through the same difficulties that we went through with Alex. Uh, there are financial burdens, or financial difficulties that families face, and we desire to be a part in helping with that. Secondly, we want to be part in cancer research. And with the Levine uh, Cancer uh, Center and, and Hospital and Children's Hospital, we desire to, to give them funds so they can continue to find uh, cures of this disease. The third thing is we want to help cancer centers in, around the world. And we want to begin in Honduras. And, and through your donations, we'll be able to help cancer centers in Honduras. But also we want to help organizations that work with children and young people and uh, do what we can to help uh, with this issue. Now, as we were thinking about the foundation and what we can do to bring funds into the foundation, the idea of beginning a business was born. Fortica Coffee is a coffee business that began with the idea of selling coffee but helping the fight against childhood cancer. 30% of all the company's net profits will go into the Alex Story Foundation and through that make an impact. Because of the Denise, I really, I really want you guys to help out too. I, I, want, I don't want you to be left out, you know. So you can either uh, donate straight to alexstoryfoundation.org or you can just uh, buy a pound of coffee at fortica.coffee. Um, coffee's really good, so, you know, give it a shot. Uh, it also helps pediatric cancer, so, you know, win-win in my book. Um, and, yeah, that's how basic way you can help out. Um, we use those funds to help out families under our need in um, uh, other countries. 
that um, they just don't have the money to get good health care. And also we're helping here to, you know, research and, you know, all those, all that good stuff. You can take part in buying a pound of coffee or even more and make a tremendous impact helping families around the world.